Well, today you find us here at Pilatary Estates Winery, such a beautiful venue, and we're talking all about ice wine. Tis the season, Richard. Take me through the process and then tell me what we have in front of us here because we've got two very different types of wine. Yes, so we're very excited. Uh, our Pilatary family is getting ready for the ice wine harvest. The cold weather is coming. We're waiting for minus eight degrees minimum, uh, waiting for that temperature so the grape is completely frozen solid. Okay. That way when we do go to press it, we're actually only getting one drop per grape. That shocks me. I cannot believe it is only one drop. Now, is it a big drop or is it a little drop? No, it's just a regular, <laughs> regular drop. Just that very, can make a difference. Very special <laughs> drop. So what happens is, is that at that temperature, all the natural water stays inside the grape. Right. And it just gets us the nectar, all those hidden flavors that get you those exotic treats that makes a nice wine. Wow. Okay, so this here is harvested at minus 10, the reserve ice wine, That's correct? Right, yeah. So this is the bougier one. This one over here, this is what we call late harvest. Tell me the difference here. So ice wine is our flagship wine. Like you said, harvested when the grape is completely frozen at mm -hmm. minus 10 degrees Celsius. Whereas the late harvest, what we can actually do is that we can get a second pressing of that ice wine grape. Oh, okay. Uh, and we're getting about half the sweetness, about half of those exotic flavors. Uh, another way that we can make this as well is that if we want to, we can harvest this earlier mm -hmm. uh, when, when it's warmer weather, just letting the grapes hang a little bit longer to ripen on the vine. So the big difference between them is actually the viscosity, the thickness between them. The ice, tell. the ice wine is a much thicker, more uh, almost syrupy wine, being that specialty dessert wine. And it's a huge difference in taste. Yes, yes. It's it's exactly half the uh, the sweetness uh, going from late harvest to ice wine. Wait, which one should we try first? We should try the ice wine first. Okay. It's, it's our big flagship one. It's our most special. So Cheers. Cheers. These tiny little glasses, I love them. Mmm. <laughs> So sweet. Yeah, so in regular wines, when people say they taste a little bit of strawberry or a little bit of cherry or plum, that's all you get with the ice that's wine. That's all you get. It's, it's the nectar. That's yeah, it's out. like a fruit yeah. salad in my mouth. Yeah. Now, is it true that if you were to put, to drink ice wine, are you supposed to put it under your tongue and let it sit there for like a few seconds and then swallow it and then it's like a completely different wine? I heard that this morning. Well, we don't want to be too bossy with it, but if you really want to optimize how much flavor you can get out of it, really try to get it to all the corners of your mouth. Ah. And uh, the the first sip, of course, not as important because you want to be able to, to freshen up your palate and get the true ice wine flavors on the second right. and third sip or even once you finish the glass. Okay, right? try it again. Mm. You can totally tell the difference if you actually make that little tiny effort. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then, now let's try this one. For late harvest, we do have some people who come to the winery and they say, wow, it's an amazing ice wine, but it's just so intense and it so is. rich. It is, it's like, woo! <laughs> so for something a little lighter, but still with those same exotic flavors, and a little bit more acidity, so it's a little bit more crisp, you can have a little bit of a larger glass, the late harvest is a little easier drinking. Okay. It's good, but I like the ice wine better. <laughs> I know I'm biased, because we're here for the ice wine, but this is exquisite it's so good and this is actually real 22 karat gold that's right yeah so for our ice wine and it being our flagship product half of the wines we make at Pilatary are ice wines we're the largest estate producer in Canada and the world we put that very special 22 karat gold label on there to symbolize how much work goes into mm -hmm. it the rareness of it a lot of people don't realize how lucky we are here in the Niagara region we can make ice wine every single year it's amazing whereas most places in the world if they're lucky can make it every three to four years if it's cold enough yeah all right well thank you so much Richard we're going to be tasting some of the ice wine coming up tasting more of the ice wine coming up in a special cocktail and we're going to be trying some yummy snacks as well so don't go anywhere on morning live well, this is where the magic happens. This is where the ice wine is actually pressed at Pilateri Estates. I'm here with Chris. Chris, take me through the process. After you've picked the grapes off the vine, where do they go? So what would happen is they would get loaded onto a truck and then the truck would be brought here and okay. we would offload all the uh, pallets and then weigh them and then they would dump them into our hopper here and then individually would go into each one of these baskets, our oak basket presses here, okay. and then get loaded onto our presses over here. Is there any specific reason why they're made out of oak? Uh, just oak is a very strong wood. It's yeah. able to withstand the pressure and keep the grapes still in, and it would just prevent any kind of issue. Yeah, right. now I'm assuming and if it was a different grape season, it would squish through these holes, but because it's frozen, yes. 
Yes. It all stays in the barrel. I've just got visions of like Lucille Ball in there, like stomping her feet. I feel like you guys should have me back in the summertime to do that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you have a big machine. It carries it over to the presses. Yep, it gets loaded onto here, and then we will slowly get the grapes slowly pressed down to about 300 bars just to get every last drop that we possibly can because it's incredibly hard and they're like little pellets mm -hmm. um, and they're frozen solid so you have to crush them really really hard to get I all guess. that juice out. Yeah so some like the weight of someone's foot back in the day when they used to get in there. I guess back in the day they didn't have ice wine did they? It would be awfully cold on your feet. So, yeah. So then it goes into here. This is the kind of tray that holds yep. all the liquid? All the liquid would, be, uh, would go into the tray and we have a little hole in the back where uh, the liquid would be dropped out and then would go into our nice little tray in the back and then get shipped out to the other facility. And then it gets out to the other processing. So do you have all of these working at the same time? Yes. Wow, we it must be loud in here. Yes, it will get kind of loud in <laughs> here and we'll have a team analyzing the bricks of the sugar to make sure that it's of the, the best quality. So whether it's uh, selectly harvest or ice wine, we'll have teams wow, checking. And, uh, and this is all happening in the middle of the night? All happening in the middle of the night. I love that part about ice wine harvest. I mean, it's not great because it's cold and it's dark, but at the same time, it's kind of exciting because it's like mysterious almost when you have it at nighttime. Yeah. That's absolutely. the way I see it. You're on the field and you're like, that's not the way. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. yeah, I bet. All right, well, thanks so much for teaching us and taking us through the process. Coming up, we try some yummy food and we drink some ice wine. More coming up on Morning Live. Here with Michael, who is the executive chef at Pilateri. We're making a very special cocktail that involves the ice wine. What do you have for us today? Yeah, so today we're doing a peach mule, which is my riff on a Moscow mule. Delicious. Um, and we'll start with just some plain old lime juice. We'll do about a half ounce of that. Smart, okay. And then this is just some peach puree that we make in-house and we'll go. Oh, this is from the fresh peaches that you have in the orchard, I'm assuming? Um, well, in the summertime? We're not in the summertime, yes. yes, correct. Oh, that's so nice that you can save it and get a whole year's worth Yeah, out of so it. that's what we do is we make big batches of it and then we freeze it. Super smart. Um, this is just plain old vodka. Okay. Don't make that, I'm assuming. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then this is the our... The deliciousness. Yes, the 2015... Reserve. Reserve Riesling Ice Wine. Yeah, and okay. we're just gonna give that a little bit of a stir. I can smell it already. Like, I can smell the tanginess mixing with the alcohol, of course. But right, it, absolutely. I can smell the peach puree so almost, th too. This is, the ice wine's perfect because a lot of people think that it's typically a dessert wine, but mm -hmm. we like Super to sweet. use it in place of, like, simple syrups and cocktails. Oh, that's so smart. Yeah, so. Um, and then this is just some ginger beer that we make in-house as well. What's it called? Uh, it's our Barrelhead Ginger Beer. Barrelhead Ginger Beer. Yeah, oh my just... gosh, ginger beer like takes me back to when I was a kid. Yeah. Honestly, I like my mom being British used to serve it to us and it has that really kind of strong taste to it, but the aftertaste a little bit of spicy. as well. Yeah, like, yeah it's, absolutely. It's kind of It'll smooth. definitely wake you up, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. And then just we just garnish with some oh, lime, some candy ginger and some that fresh That candy mints. ginger is intense. All right, well, we all know that I have to try it just to see. I think the fresh mint, I can smell it already, yeah. adds to the ambiance of the whole cocktail. Oh, that's delicious. You can taste the ice wine, you can taste the peach, but the ginger beer, I feel like, is what's making this cocktail yeah. amazing. Yeah, so we served this all summer long on our patio at Barrelhead. Mm. Um, nice and refreshing and mm -hmm. kind of, again, gives you that wake up that you yeah. Kind of crave in the summer, right? That quench. So good. Yeah. Uh, now, the Ice Wine Festival, too, is happening every weekend in January, so you can check that out. And coming up, Michael is going to showcase one of the desserts that they are um, putting out at the Ice Wine Festival. So stay with us. Lots more to come on Morning Live. Well, we're back here with Michael at Pilateria Estates, and I want to mention that this cocktail, the Peach Mule, is actually being entered in the cocktail competition at the Niagara Ice Wine, and I have a feeling it, it just might win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. You got my vote. Okay, what are we trying here? We've got something tasty that we're going to try. So today we're pairing the apple blossom that I made uh, with our, again, our Riesling uh, ice wine, okay. our reserve ice wine. Okay. Um, we're doing this for the um, festival, which mm -hmm. is the last three weekends in January. One has already passed, but uh, the next two coming up. Um, and this is just an apple blossom that I've made with a little bit of puff pastry, some caramelized apples with some nutmeg and cinnamon, and some oats in there. and top with some raw sugar. Amazing. Okay, now what's this that you're going to put on top? So this is just some mascarpone that I have. It's just kind of like a sweet Italian cheese and then I 
make it even sweeter by putting mm. a whole bunch of honey in there. Amazing. Now, iced wine traditionally serves as a dessert wine. You have it with dessert, but... Correct. I mean, sometimes that could be a bit of a sensory overload for people. If they're like, oh no, it's too sweet. I want to pair my iced wine with something else. What else can we put with it right. on your menu? Um, my first thing, obviously, is our iced wine cocktails, right? Like mm -hmm. I had mentioned, but yep. um, of course the pizzas. We make a large variety of pizzas here Apparently, at Apparently you're quite the showman when you do the pizza. You see, he stands <laughs> out in this really cool outdoor um, kitchen and you can see him from every view on the patio and he's throwing the dough in the air yeah. and making a show and doing all this stuff and people are just sitting there watching me like, where's my pizza? Where's my pizza? <laughs> Make my pizza. Right. That must be fun. No pressure at all. No pressure at all. <laughs> no. I don't drop any. <laughs> no, never. never. That's not your dough, sir. That's, right. that's the woman sitting beside you. That's hers. That's Correct. her pizza. <laughs> So we just have the warm apple blossom here with some cool mascarpone cheese. I'm gonna finish it off oh, with a little bit yes. more honey. Now we're talking we honey, apple blossom, cheese, mint. Nothing could go wrong here. Nothing this is incredible. Wow. And I love that you guys can cater to all seasons too. It's not just a summertime place. You guys can really get involved in the winter with ice wine harvest. And Absolutely. Ice and wine festival. Yep, Arrowhead and Pillatory is open all year round as well. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Tourism season never stops in Niagara. That's right. All right, so I'm going to take a sip of this. You know, I have to like, learned, yeah. I've learned Richard. Yeah, right. Richard taught me his ways. Good. And now I'm going to try the apple blossom. Oh, it makes such a difference when you get it to every corner of your mouth. Right, absolutely. I kind of feel like, mm, I'm so snobby when I say that, but <laughs> it's true. Oh, I'm really looking forward to this. It's like the breakfast of champions. Mmm, that is so good. Thank you. Mm, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michael. Yes, absolutely. Thanks oh for coming. Gosh. Ice Wine Festival happening last weekend in January. Go there, try this. You will not be disappointed.